thee, uh -huh. but to fear the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to walk in all his ways, uh -huh. and to love him, uh -huh. right. and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Sound like a lot. You finna sum it up though. Read. Read. Yeah. To keep the commandments. What? Keep the commandments. What we supposed to be doing? What's our requirement? Keep the commandments. We got to keep the commandments. That's right. That's right. What's today? Saturday. What that mean? Saturday. What's today? Huh? Sabbath. What are we supposed to do on the Sabbath? What's the requirements to please God on the Sabbath? Bring it out. Huh? How do we do that? Follow the commandments. What's the commandments to keep to make the Sabbath holy? You understand? We have never been taught, brother. We got to sit down. We got to come and learn. Give me that. The book of Exodus. Chapter. The book of. The book of Exodus. Chapter 20 and verse 8. Bring it out. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. In it thou shalt not do any work. You see that? Oh. You used to think that. Why? Who told us that? Who, who created the church? Because, let me ask you this. Pull up that, give me that slave ship. How you doing, Mom? How you doing? I'm well, yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Can you answer something for me, Mom? I'm doing All right. When we got off these slave ships, right, was we, was we going to church? What was we doing? Bring it up. When we got off? Yeah, when, when, when we got off, the, off these ships, because you know we came over here on slave ships. Was we going to church? What was we doing? Working. Working where? In these cotton fields? In the sugarcane field, tobacco fields? Right. So who was going to church? The white people. They was going to church. So when they wanted to brainwash us and institutionalize us, what did they make us do? They made us go to church. That's right. On Sunday. At first, they were they was using us for their our their amusement. We would shuck and jive and dance all on the floor. Teach out. And scream and holler and hoop and holler. Same way we do today. It's a learned behavior. You understand? Because when this when this was happening to us, the white man said he was a Christian. You got I want this right here. What is it? Yeah, read this. Yeah, read the read the title of the book. When I was a slave, memoirs from the slave narrative collection, edited by Norman R. Yetman. These are our forefathers. When they came over here, let me show them the cover. When they came over here, when they got off these ships, you said we was working in the field. Watch what our watch what our foremothers wrote down. They, re they made a record of this. We, by page 32, we had the best mistress and master in the world. Oh. They was Christian folks. What was that? Christian folks. Wow. The people that was doing this to us, they say they was what? Christian folks. Oh, bring it out. And they taught us to be Christian like too. You see that? Bring it out. Because God's laws is our heritage. Right, right. We supposed to be keeping the commandments, but the white man know who we is. So when we came over here, they robbed, stripped us, and made us keep their customs. Right. That's right. Which is antichrist. No. Read. Start the beginning. Yes, sir. We had the best mistress and master in the world, uh -huh. and they was Christian folks, and they taught us to be Christian like too. Uh -huh. Every Sunday morning. Every what? Every Sunday morning. Where we get the uh where do we get the mindset that Sunday is the Sabbath? The slave master. No such thing as Sunday worship with God. That's sun worship. Read that. Every Sunday morning, old master would have all us niggas 
to the house while he would sing and pray and read the Bible to us all. Uh -huh. Old Master taught us not to be bad. He taught us to be good. He told us to never steal nor tell false tales and not to do anything that was bad. Uh -huh. He said, you will reap what you sow, uh -huh. that you sow in single and reap double. He said, don't do nothing bad. But at the same time, this is what he doing to us. He hanging us on trees, cutting our feet off and we try to run from slavery. You understand? That's what he taught us. And he also forced this image on us. Right? And we still have this hanging up in our churches today. And the doctrine that come along with that. Right? Yeah, read that. Man-made religions. These are all the man-made religions. This is not what God to do. Watch this. That's right. Charles Parr founded the Pentecostal religion in 1609. Your church denomination is a false religion. Acts. Well, let me read that one more time. Your church denomination is a false religion. Uh -huh. Acts 529 uh -huh. We ought to obey God Rather than men Did God give us religion Who gave it to us Which one right. That's right, That's That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Give me Colossians 2 and 8 Bring it out, Bring it out. The white man gave us that It's time for us as a people To wake up Christ soon to return and if the children of Israel, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are not doing what God requires of us, we're going to face judgment first. That's right. That's right. 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 Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Read Read out. Beware, lest any man spoil you. This is the apostle Paul. I mean, the Paul. He's talking to the church in Colossae, Israelites that were scattered in Colossae. He's saying, beware what? Lest any man spoil you. Lest any man spoil you, destroy you. Right. Read. Through philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit. Uh -huh. After the tradition of men. After what? The tradition of men. Christianity is a tradition of what men? The white men. That's right. That That's is not right. our heritage. That is not our culture. Bring it up. You understand that? Give me Sirach 17, 11. 11 what is it 11, 17? Yeah. That is not our custom. Sunday worship is not our custom. Right. No, go back to Exodus 28. God told us to do what? The book, the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 8. Bring it up. Remember the What's that word? Remember. What do you say? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Why would he have to tell us to remember it? Why? Because a man, a whole nation of people would come and they would do this to you and make you forget the Sabbath day was Saturday. That's right. They'll tell you that it was Sunday. At the same time, they were stripping your children away from you. At the same time, they were whooping you across your back with a bull whip. At the right. same time, they were hanging your husband, cutting your wife belly open while the children were falling out on the ground, Teach. stomping their head into the ground. Teach. Teach. They forced that on us through fear. They said they put the fear of God in there. When you really read the Willie Lynch letters, he said, beat him till he dead, but put the fear of God in him. They changed our natural state into worshiping them as God. That's why we follow that image. That's why when you see one of our brothers or sisters get shot, downtown or the police kneel down on his neck. What happened? We want to hold hands and march with the white man. Why God doing this to us? Why you doing this to us? Why you don't love us, God? Bring it out. It's real. It's embedded in our brains. That's right. We got to erase that. And how do we erase it with the word of God? Read what you got. Right. The Willie Lynch letter. Uh -huh. The making of a slave. Uh -huh. Page 15. Take the meanest and most restless nigger, strip him of his clothes in front of the remaining male nigger. You understand this? Read that from the beginning. Take the meanest and most restless nigger. Take the meanest, the biggest Debo. Take the biggest one of us, the one who symbolized strength in our, in our houses, in our community. Take that big one. 
Read. Strip him of his clothes. Strip him bare naked. Embarrass him. Read. In front of the remaining niggers, uh -huh. the female and the nigger in, uh -huh. in front of our women and children. This is what they did. Read. Tar and feather him. Throw some tar on that nigger and throw feathers on that nigger. Read. Tie each leg to a different horse uh -huh. faced in opposite direction. Uh -huh. Set him a fire. Put him what? Set him a fire. If they doing this in front of our children and our women, how do you think that, what kind of psychological state you think they in? Bring it out. Bring it out. The next Bring it out. man, the next man, the, the strongest man, how you think he feeling? Because he next on the chopping block. Right. He next. Right. Read. Set him a fire and beat both horses to pull him apart. Do what? Pull him apart in front of the remaining nigger. Pull him apart. Literally beat these horses across their butt until they strip these men arm and legs off of him. Teach up. Read. The next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining nigga male to the point of death in front of the female and the infant. Now, when this happened, they beating you. After they done tarred and feathered the strongest one, now they beating another one till he about to die. What? This, this is a, and it has been perpetuated year after year after year. Now it's within our grandmothers and grandfathers and it's in their mind to teach us how to be weak and feeble. Right, right. Docile. Docile. When a white man come through, you better, better sit your butt down, boy. We have reversed the relationships in her natural uncivilized state she would have a strong dependency on the uncivilized nigger male. Uh -huh. And she would have limited, she would have a limited protective dependency toward her independent male offspring. This is the woman's state of mind now. Y'all understand that? Read. And would raise female offspring to be dependent like her. I'm independent, independent. <laughs> this is our mindset now. Bring it out. Our women, they don't need, I don't need no nigger for nothing. Read that one more time. She would have a limited protective dependency towards her independent male offspring and would raise female offspring to be dependent like her. Nature had provided for this type of balance. This was nature that the man leave the house. Nature that the man provide, protect for the house. Right. Nature provided for that. Right. And women understood that naturally, if a man chose her to be his wife, that he would protect and shield her. That's right. Naturally. Right. But because a devil came in yep. and changed nature, now she like, what? We reverse nature by burning and pulling one civilized nigger apart and pull whipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence. Uh -huh. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed. With the what? With the male image destroyed. We destroyed men. We destroyed as a nation. Free. It's time for you young men to rise back up. H hold that, hold that. Go to Psalms 94, 16. Bring it up! Watch what God say. Listen to God. How you doing? You know you're an Israelite? Read. <laughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 94 and verse 16. Bring it up! Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? What God say to his Israelite men? Who will rise up for me? Against the evildoers. Who gonna rise up for me against all this atrocity you seeing happen to my people? Free. Who? Is it gonna be you? That's something you gotta ask yourself. You understand? Are you gonna continue to be in this destroyed state of mind? Allowing these young men to be come up in a society that hate their guts and they don't know why? Teach. In a, in living in a, a, a land that's been, we know the white man came and took it from the Indians and the Mexicans and they being miseducated about it. Right. We know that, but what we wanna do, we wanna chase women, we wanna be drunk, we wanna be high, we wanna be in the streets. Teacher. You still don't know if you wanna do this, Rick? Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? 
or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? That's a question God asking you right now. We need men. You young men, some of y'all way more manly than these men out here. Yeah. Right. Y'all got more guts to stand up for the Lord than some of these old men out here. Right. Look at what look at the atrocities that happen to our people. How can you leave this point right here today and go back to a lifestyle of what you've been doing out in the world? How can you do that? How can you find out I'm an Israelite and this happened to my people? Now I'm finna go back to being a nigga again. How? How? Our mothers, our daughters, our sisters, our brothers depend on us. Give me that in Judah. Bring it out, huh? God said we got to be an example, 824. Bring it out. We have to be. It ain't no, it ain't no choice. It's a requirement. Right. It's required of you. And if God cannot use you, he will kill you. Let's read. Let's read. Read. The book of Judah, chapter 8 and verse 24. Bring it out. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us. God said, show an example to your brothers because their hearts, their minds depend on how you are. Right. This ain't for everybody. Teach. It's only an elect few that's going to be saved when these chariots come back. Right. You remember our forefathers when they was in them cotton fields, they were saying, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Remember that? What are they talking about? Huh? Which ones? Let me tell you, let me, let me say, when Christ show up with these chariots, give me that in Isaiah 66, 15. Bring it out! When Christ out. show up with them chariots, let me show you what his mindset gonna be. Bring it out! The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. Bring it out! For behold, the Lord will come with fire. How he come? With fire Read. and with his chariots like a whirlwind Read. to render his anger what is the law his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire when christ show up it ain't gonna be lollipops and gum drops right. 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 That's right. Right. he coming to rebuke first and foremost us Judgments must start at Israel. Right. Secondly, the nations who did this to us, they gotta pay for that. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.